So when creating our chain brush, the first thing we want to do is activate the grid and the snap to grid feature. So go to view, then go to show grid, then go to view again and snap to grid. Then before drawing anything, go down to the transform panel right here. If it isn't open, you can go to window and find it right here. Then go down to the transform panel and click this drop down menu right here and make sure align new object to pixel grid is turned off. This will help you align the objects perfectly to the grid. And now the final thing we want to do before we start drawing our chain is to zoom into the canvas a little bit. So select the zoom tool and zoom in like this. So to start drawing our chain, we want to select the rounded rectangle tool. And the very first thing we want to do is fill out one of these small squares right here. We are doing this just to determine the size of one of these squares. And as you can see in the top of the screen, my small squares are 9 pixels wide. This is the default grid size, but if you have changed the grid size, this number might be different. Now that we know that one of these small squares are 9 pixels wide, we can simply delete the circle. So let's start drawing the links of the chain. To do this, start in one of these crosshairs right here and create an ellipse that is one large square tall and two large squares wide. And before you release the mouse key, hold down up on your keyboard until the corners are as round as possible. Then release the mouse key. And here we have the first link of our chain. Now pick the selection tool and disable the fill of the link, leaving only the stroke left. And here is the reason we wanted to know the size of one of these small squares from the beginning of the video. Because we want this stroke right here to be the width of two small squares. My squares are 9 pixels, therefore two squares are 18 pixels. And pixels and points are the same size. So simply type down the size of two of your small squares, 18 in this case, and click enter. This now means that our stroke fills out exactly two small squares. Now while having the link selected, go to the stroke menu and select align stroke to inside. And now we have our first link, but we need this link to be a shape that we can edit instead of a stroke. So while having the link selected, go to object, go to expand appearance, and now the link is a shape instead of a stroke. Then simply hold down the alt key to duplicate and create a duplication of this link and place it right here. Now we want to create the link that connects these two shapes. For this, select the ellipse tool, hold down the shift key and create a circle that is 2 by 2 small squares from one of these crosshairs right here. As you can see, we start from the beginning of this link right here. Then go to the other end of the link, go to this crosshair right here and create another circle that is also 2 by 2 small squares. Then pick the line tool and create a line that goes from the top of this circle to the top of this circle. Then create another line that goes from the bottom and to the bottom of this circle. Pick the selection tool, select all these shapes and lines, then go to the shape builder tool and connect all these shapes together. Meaning they are now one single shape. And to color this shape, simply pick the selection tool, select the fill and select the color for the fill. And this is one of these links seen from the side. Now move this link in the middle of these two links. And here we have the base for the chain. But how do we turn this into a brush? For this we want to create some kind of puzzle pieces that fits seamlessly together for the brush. So to do this, select the rectangle tool, go to this crosshair right here, hold down the shift key and make a square that goes down to this crosshair right here. Then make this a stroke instead of a fill. So this square right here is going to be how we create our puzzle pieces. Because creating square puzzle pieces is going to make it much easier to fit everything together when we fit the brush together at the end. So create a square that cuts down the exact middle of this link right here and also at this link right here. And make sure that the middle of the square is also in the middle of this link right here. Then pick the selection tool, select the square and all the links, pick the shape builder tool and hold down the alt key to get this minus sign next to the cursor and subtract this part of the link and also this part. Then simply go back to the selection tool. And here we have the first part of the puzzle. As you can see, if I copy this puzzle piece, they fit together seamlessly to form a long chain. This puzzle piece is the middle of the chain, so we need to create a beginning of the chain, an end of the chain and also a corner or a turn of the chain. So to create the beginning of the chain, we can simply delete this shape right here and this shape right here. And here we have a beginning. And to create the end of the chain, we can simply select this puzzle piece right here, 
hold down the Alt key to duplicate and make another duplication and place it to the right of the original. And for this one, of course, we want to delete this shape and this shape. So now we have a beginning piece, we have a middle piece and we have an end piece. Now we simply need a corner piece and this step is a little bit more complicated. So to create our corner piece, let's start off by selecting the middle piece. Then create a duplication of this middle piece and place it right here. And let's scroll down a little bit so we can see what we are doing. So how do we create this corner piece? Before we do that, let me show you how the brushes are built. So I'm going to deselect this one. Then I'm going to the brush panel and we can double click on this brush right here. You don't need to do the same thing, it's just to show you how the corners are made. So as you can see right here, our brush is made of a beginning piece, which we have right here, an end piece, which we have right here, and a middle piece, which we have right here. And then you can see we have two corner pieces right here. And if you look closely, we can see that our corner piece goes from right and down, and the other corner piece goes from down to right. This means we can actually use the same corner piece as we only need it to go from right to down and down to right. Okay, so let's do a corner piece that goes from down to right. So cancel this pop-up. And as we can see right here, our corner piece is already going out the right side. So we only need this link right here to be placed in the bottom of the square instead of in the left side. So let's grab this link right here, turn it around 90 degrees while holding down the shift key and place this link right here. But now our connector link doesn't fit. So select the connector link, hold down the shift key and rotate this one 45 degrees. And then we can simply move this with the arrow keys and place it how we want it. So move it a little bit to the right and a little bit down. So make sure it's in the middle of this link and in the middle of this link, just like I did right here. So let's zoom out to see all our pieces. So now we need to turn all these pieces into swatches. But we don't want these squares to have a stroke so that the squares turn up on our brush. But if we delete the squares, these pieces of the chain is no longer square. Therefore, we want to keep the square so we can make square swatches. So instead of deleting the squares, simply pick the selection tool and select all the squares without the links. And simply hold down the shift key to select this one as well. Then select the stroke and disable the stroke. So now the squares are invisible, but fortunately we remember where they are. So now let's go to the swatches panel and start creating our swatches. And we know the beginning piece is right here. So select this piece right here and make sure you have the square selected plus the link inside. This will be the beginning piece. So simply grab the piece and drop it inside the swatches panel. And then it turns up as a small swatch right here. Now grab the middle piece, drop it in the swatches panel and then grab the end piece and drop that in the swatches panel as well. Do the same thing for the corner piece. Then deselect everything and to do ourselves a huge favor, we want to take a little bit of time to rename these swatches we just made. So double click on the first swatch, go to this name field right here and call this one the beginning. Then click done. Rename this one middle this one, end, and the last one we will call corner. This will make it way easier to figure out when we assemble our brush. So to do this, go to the brushes panel right here, click new brush right here, and select pattern brush. Click OK. And in these squares right here, we need to put down the right combination of swatches. And this should be easy because we named them. So if we hover over this, we can see that this is the end tile. So select this tile right here and select the end. Then select the beginning tile right here and select beginning right here. And this one should be the middle tile. And both of these are corner tiles. And if you want, we can name this chain brush. And before we click OK, I suggest you go down to colorization, select the method and select Hue Shift. This will make it way easier to change the color of the brush. So click OK. And now we have our brush right here. So let's zoom out a little bit to demonstrate. So we can use this brush in different ways. We can simply use the freehand brush tool and create a brush like this. And if we do it like this, 
we will never use the corner piece. But the reason why we needed to create a corner piece is because that if we do something like a square that has 90 degree angles, we will see the corner pieces. And as you can tell right here, they work perfectly. And because we chose hue shift right here, we can now simply change color of the brush by clicking at the color palette. If you can think of other kind of brushes you want me to make, please leave your idea down in the comment section. Thank you for watching.